This is from The Hill. Comedian and last week tonight host John Oliver is urging Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas to resign, offering a, mil a million dollars a year to do so. Oliver railed against the conservative justice during the 11th season premiere of his weekly show uh, on Sunday, saying Thomas has made the lives of Americans demonstrably worse and promising him a brand new luxury recreational vehicle if he agrees to step down from the high court. Um, we have this uh, clip of this comedy bit, I suppose it's supposed to be. Uh, here it is. Watch. Now, from stripping away women's rights to January 6th cases you definitely shouldn't be hearing to potentially helping roll back decades of federal regulations. And you deserve a break, you know, away from the meanness of Washington. So you can be surrounded by the regular folks whose lives you've made demonstrably worse for decades now. And the good news is, I think we can help you there because since your favorite mode of travel might be in need of an upgrade, we are excited to offer you <laughs> this brand new top of the line Prevost Marathon motor coach. Look at this beauty, Clarence. It's worth $2.4 million, and it's got a full bedroom. Yes, that is a king bed. One and a half baths, a fireplace, four TVs, a washer-dryer, and, and I quote, a residential-sized fridge. And if you're thinking, what will my friends say if I take this offer? Will they judge me as they sit in their boardrooms and mega yachts and Hitler shrines? Will they still treat me to luxury vacations and sing songs about me off their phones? Well, that's the beauty of friendship, Clarence. If they're real friends, they'll love you no matter what your job is. So I guess this might be the perfect way to find out who your real friends actually are. So that's the offer. A million dollars a year, Clarence, and a brand new condo on wheels. And all you have to do in return is sign the contract and get the f*** off the Supreme Court. Hmm. You know, I have to say, I actually despise John Oliver maybe more than I despise anybody in media. And I, and I understand that's quite a statement because I have nothing but seething contempt for all of them. Um, and... You know, and, and you might say to yourself, well, John Oliver, yeah, he's a smarmy, sniveling little British douchebag. Sure, he looks and sounds like an overgrown weasel. Sure, he's the personification of the term skinny fat. Uh, sure, you know, he's like Harry Potter if Harry Potter's superpower was being extremely unfunny. And sure, all of that is true, but there are still plenty of other soulless, blood-sucking leeches in the media in Hollywood who are worse than him. I mean, you might say all that to yourself, and, 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 uh, and that's true, but for me personally, John Oliver is especially obnoxious, um, and I think it's that while being a dim-witted hack like all the rest of them, he also pretends to be a comedian. That, that's the part that j offends me on a personal level. Um, it, it's, it's, it's only that part. Don't call yourself a comedian it, it, and keep all the rest the same and don't call yourself a comedian. And then you'll just be as bad as the, as, as everybody else in media. Um, but he pretends to be a comedian and yet he's never told a joke in his life. His idea of telling a joke is to rant and whine, but use the F word while he's ranting and whining. And that's the whole joke. So here's, here, here's, here's basically the, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you this, the secret uh, the John Oliver C. This is the formula. Uh, it, it, so a normal left-wing pundit on CNN or something might say this. They'll say, Donald Trump is terrible. He's a fascist, right? That's what. Now, that's your run-of-the-mill average kind of left-wing commentary. Uh, and nobody would claim that that is a hilarious stand-up set, even if you agree with it. You're not going to say, you're not going to pretend that it's funny. It's like, okay, well, yeah, that's, you're criticizing Donald Trump. Have you ever browsed in incognito mode? Well, it's probably not as incognito as you think. And why would it be in the first place? Big tech has made its fortune by tracking your movements online. There's even a $5 billion class action lawsuit against a company in California that's been accused of secretly collecting user data. Their defense, while well, they say incognito, does not mean invisible. So how do you actually make yourself invisible online? Well, you got to use ExpressVPN like I do. It turns out that even in incognito mode, big tech is still tracking your online activity and data brokers still buy and sell your data. One of these data points is your IP address, which data harvesters use to uniquely identify you and your location. But 
With ExpressVPN, your connection gets rerouted through an encrypted server, and your IP address is masked, making it harder for third parties to identify you or harvest your data. Best of all, ExpressVPN is super easy to use no matter what device you're on, phone, laptop, smart TV, all you got to do is tap one button for instant protection. If you really want to go incognito and protect your privacy, secure yourself with the number one rated VPN. Visit expressvpn.com slash Walsh and get three extra months for free. That's expressvpn.com slash Walsh. Go to expressvpn.com slash Walsh to learn more. John Oliver, though, what he'll do is he'll put a twist on it. And he'll say, Donald Trump is terrible. He's an effing fascist. And, it, and then it's hilarious. And then you just, it's uproar. It's, it's, you, you, it's the funniest thing you've ever heard in your life. People, the audience is, 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 they're breathless. They are breathless with laughter. They're doubled over laughing because he put the F word in there. That is the whole, um, that's the whole, that's the John Oliver secret. That's how you take run-of-the-mill CNN tier commentary and you turn it into, apparently, hilarious, uproarious, comedic brilliance, and you should win 57 Emmys for it. Um, that's what we're supposed to believe anyway. But I don't believe it, and it annoys me that people on the left pretend to believe it. Uh, and, and as for the substance of this latest, uh, this latest comedy bit from John Oliver, you know, it, it goes without saying, of course, that if any white person did exactly this same thing but directed it at a black liberal instead— then they would be condemned as racist by the entire media and everybody on the left. And, you know, they, they would be trying to put them in jail probably for it. Um, and, it, you know, because, because obviously, right, uh, you got a white guy trying to buy off a black public official. It's openly saying this guy is for sale. I'm buying you as a black public. I'm going to buy you. Um, and in any other context, that would be, it would be considered to be just uh, insanely racist. But those rules are suspended, of course, because it's Clarence Thomas, and they despise him, and they despise him, in fact, significantly more than they despise any white person who has the same ideas or even any other... I mean, you might, like... Why are they so hung up on Clarence Thomas? There, there are other conservatives on the Supreme Court. Not enough, in my opinion. Not enough... Uh, uh, um, reliable ones. But why all this special vitriol for Clarence Thomas? And the answer is that uh, because he's black. And so they consider his conservatism to be sort of a betrayal. John Oliver believes that he owns Clarence Thomas. He believes that Thomas, being a black man, belongs to him ideologically. And the fact that he isn't cooperating, the fact that he, that he is his own man with his own point of view, sends guys like John Oliver into a rage just the, the, the amount of undisguised contempt that they have for this guy. I mean, starting with the fact he's calling Clarence Thomas by his first name, you know, not using his proper title, spitting in his face, basically, calling into question his basic integrity as a man. And uh, he feels absolutely entitled to do all of that because Thomas has betrayed him by not being a Marxist ghoul. Now, you know that uh, I'm not one to do the whole... Uh, Dems are the real racist bit. You know, that's not my that's not my thing. You know how I feel about that generally. But in this case, you really just can't help but notice that John Oliver literally treats the guy like an escaped slave. That, that is actually how he treats him. I mean, he's trying to buy him back. That's <laughs> what he's doing. And uh, he's doing all this while being painfully unfunny on top of it, which is the real, which again, that is the real offense here. Because even all this, even every, everything else, you put aside how morally objectionable it is, if he was actually able to do it in a funny way, then you could at least give him credit. I could say, well, I disagree with it. I might even have moral qualms with it. But it, it is funny. I'll give him that. But you can't say that because there's no joke here. Um, which is why, you know, I, and I made this offer on Twitter yesterday, and I'll just reiterate it here, that um, here, you know, we have, we have the, the offer being made to Clarence Thomas. I'll make my own deal to John Oliver which is, John, I will give you a million dollars in cash, unmarked bills, if you can tell one funny joke. Uh, just one is all we need. And, you know, and I, and I don't, it, it, shouldn't be, it shouldn't be hard to do. Um, 
You could, you know what? I'll even let you go and Google it. You could Google funny jokes. And I just want to hear you tell one. That's it. I want to hear you tell one funny, and that, but let me explain a joke is that there's a, a, the structure to the joke, which means that you've got a setup, right? And you've got the punchline of the joke. And, and very often your jokes, there's no punchline at all, except that you're mad and you're sad and your tummy hurts because of uh, someone is conservative in your presence. Like that's not a punchline. Unless, well, you yourself are a punchline, but I don't, but that doesn't really count. So you yourself being a joke of a person, you yourself being um, a clown is not a punchline in and of itself. So what I, what I need is, is the setup and the punchline. Sometimes you have the setup. Uh, you never have the punchline. A lot of times you don't even have the setup. So I need you to put both of those things together, and then I'll, I'll give you a million dollars. A million dollars. I will get to you. Um, and, and, you know, by the way, it, it should also be said that... Um, Yes, that whole segment was a federal crime. You know, just that small little detail. So, uh, bribing, openly bribing a federal official, a Supreme Court ju- judge, justice, is a crime. I mean, you, that's punishable by up to fifteen years in prison. And and I would love to see. I mean, if Trump uh, wins in twenty twenty four, he should really go after John Oliver and try to put him in prison for bribing a federal official. One hundred percent, he should do it. Hey, YouTube, thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like access to my full show with no ads, you should go to dailywire.com and use promo code Walsh to get two months free on all annual plans. See you there.